Hello and welcome to Grizzly's video wheel and blade guide adjustments when installing a new blade and a metal cutting bandsaw. My name is Kent and this is one in a series of how-to videos that we are producing making it easier for our customers to upgrade and maintain their Grizzly equipment. This is Sean, an engineer here at Grizzly. Together we're going to show you step by step how to properly check and correct any blade wheel or blade guide adjustments after installing a blade in a metal cutting bandsaw. We're using a Grizzly G0561 7 inch by 12 inch capacity metal cutting bandsaw, but the procedure is nearly the same for most of the saws out there. This video is designed to give you an overview of the procedure and to help you visualize the process. Before starting, it is recommended that you become familiar with your owner's manual in its entirety, including all safety instructions. We recommend you watch this entire video and read these instructions thoroughly before beginning this job. You can also call our technical support at 570-546-9663 if you need further assistance. But most important, follow all shop safety procedures and remember, there are no more important safety devices than these. Always start by unplugging the machine from the power source. Bandsaw blades come in different thicknesses. For example, the factory blade that came with your saw may be 25 one thousandths of an inch thick, whereas the replacement blade may be 32 one thousandths of an inch thick. This difference in blade thickness will require a blade guide adjustment and possibly a tracking adjustment. Let's start by removing the old blade. Raise the upper arm and open the cover. Release the tension on the blade and then pull the blade from the machine. Be careful when handling the blade to avoid injury. Before installing the new blade, the guides need to be slightly retracted to accept a wider blade. Typically, only one side of the guide is adjustable. Loosen the locking nut on the adjustable side and slightly turn the eccentric bearing mounting shaft to separate the bearings on both upper and lower guides. Now let's get the new blade installed. Blades normally come coiled up and you should be extra careful when opening them up to prevent injury to yourself. Place the blade on the wheels and add just enough tension to hold the blade in place. Now temporarily plug the power back in and stand to the side and turn the machine on and off quickly so the blade will move to its running position on the wheels and then finish tensioning the blades. It is very important to remember to unplug the machine from the wall after this is done. Make sure the blade is not touching the rear bearing support. A properly tracked blade is near but not touching the back shoulder of the blade wheels and approximately 1 16th inch away from the rear bearing. To properly adjust the bearing guides, you need to have the bearings touching the blade. This will keep the blade straight and give you the most accurate cuts. Adjust the eccentric shaft so the bearing fully touches the blade and then tighten the locking nut. You have the correct setting when the bearing is touching but you're still able to turn the bearing with your fingers without the blade turning. Now that the guides are set, let's check the tracking. A properly tracked blade will be touching but not pushing hard against the lip on the back side of the blade wheels. If the blade rides forward, it can come off the wheels. An easy way to check this is to see if there is a gap between the back of the blade and the wheel lip. If there is, make a slight tracking adjustment to move it so it just contacts the lip. Now close the blade covers and lower and lock the upper arm above the piece to be cut. Adjust both the upper and lower guides close to but not touching the work as it's being cut. Turn the machine on and you're ready to start cutting. 